Hello and welcome to interest.co.nz. I'm Gareth Vaughan with another of our Double Shot interviews and I'm joined by Chris Nigren who is the CEO of Optimal Usability. Um, welcome in Chris. Thank um, you very much. You've uh, just done a big study on um, I guess the bank's um, mobile phone uh, applications, apps and um, their services in general. I'm just wondering, just before we get into that, which is a, an interesting topic, obviously, can you just give us a little bit of an idea about what Optimal Usability does? Sure. Yes, yeah, so Optimal Usability is a user research and design company. Um, we work with about 200 New Zealand corporates. Um, a lot of it is in the online space, but moving more and more into mobile. We also do physical product, products and services and stuff like that. So um, a lot of it's to do with usability and user experience. So. Okay, and, and some of those corporate clients obviously are some of the banks too. Exactly. So um, we uh, work with most of New Zealand banks. So um, so this is, I guess, a disclaimer that yeah. we work with these guys. So. Okay. And yeah. look, so, I mean, in, in the this, this survey that, um, that you did, um, this work you've done, I mean, how did the banks stack up? How, how, how well are they doing in terms of their mobile apps and what are they doing well and where do they need to improve? So, so the New Zealand banks are doing uh, quite well. There's, qu there's quite a range. So um, the guys who do well do really well. Um, so in our study, for example, ASB, who, who came out tops, um, it, it, on our measures, measures better than the, the, the biggest US bank in the space, um, JP Morgan Chase. So, so they're certainly up there in terms of how well they're doing. Um, uh, it's not uniform, so some of the banks have uh, got a way to, to make up in this space. And um, what particular areas are, are ASB doing well in? I mean, obviously they've come out top. Yeah, they they um, do. They have a lot of features. So um, and users want to do stuff on their mobile. It's not just about looking how much money they got in their bank. You want to do a bunch of stuff. So they they do things like um, paying Facebook friends. They you can pay your trade me um, buys. Um, but they've also invested quite a lot of money into the design of that. So if you have a lot of features, which we found through the study, um, it could be a bit of a pitfall. Um, so you meet, need to really focus on the, uh, on executing that well and the design of the interface, so they do that well. And you, you judge the banks in five different categories. Can you tell us a little bit about those and perhaps um, who scored best in those? Sure. So. Um, so basically, the, the, we, we looked at some simple categories to start with, like how, what can you do on your mobile? So how many features have you got? Um, and, and in that category, uh, the top bank is actually TSB, which is also the smallest bank uh, in our survey. So they've gone all out, uh, really put feature stack their, their app. Um, ASB did really well there as well. Um, the second category we looked at was, was user ratings. So we looked at the App Store ratings, we looked at Google Play um, to see how they how they all scored. It's it's fraught with danger looking at, at user ratings. Um, um, the, if you look at the comments in the user ratings, they could be the same comment, but the scores could be polar opposites. So you just have to be a little careful. But in the user ratings, really BNZ, um, uh, TSB, um, and, and Kiwi Bank score really well. Um, the third category we looked at was um, platforms. So how many different ways can you access to mobile app? Um, and really here is where the smaller players like TSB sort of fall short. They make a choice to invest in one platform, an, an iPhone, uh, which really um, uh, excludes a lot of users uh, in New Zealand these days. Um, whereas a Westpac uh, and an ASB, they're available for, for on four platforms each. So they've decided to go abroad, which is important for a Main Street bank, I guess. Um, the next thing we looked at was um, usability. So we actually um, recruited real customers and put them in our labs in front of, uh, in front of the mobile apps and gave them tasks to see how well they did. Um, and it's essentially seeing, uh, we calculate a score, it's called a system usability score, um, which is an internationally recognised score for, for how easy or user friendly the uh, app is to use. Um, and uh, in those, um, uh, really the, the, the Westpac uh, and the ASB came out tops. Um, and um, this really comes down a lot to how well thought through um, the app is and how well designed it is. And the final category was um, what we term interaction design. So um, it essentially comes down to how well designed is the app in terms of what the users want to achieve. Um, and, and in that case, um, ASB comes out tops and, and, and they do invest a lot in the design of their features. So, so on balance, um, ASB comes out top, um, Westpac, BNZ score well. Um, banks like who don't have a lot of resource like TSB um, struggle uh, and uh, and also um, ANZ seems to have been 
caught out a little with the merger with National Bank um, and, and are sort of fallen behind a bit. But they're promising to do something about it. Yeah, that's an interesting one. I mean, that's the first mention you've made of ANZ. Um, where do they really need to, to get their act together in this space? So interestingly, they were probably the market leader. They were first off the block. Um, uh, really what they need to do is, is broaden what you can do on their app. Um, it's pretty thin on features at the moment. It's actually well designed. It comes out as well designed. Users don't struggle, really. But, uh, but you just can't do enough. And they, uh, um, they've got a way to go to catch up. Now, I mean, how important is this area for banks now? I mean, how many New Zealanders are banking via their smartphones? And could this be a factor that um, in the decision making of which bank that customers choose now even? Uh, so absolutely. And, and that was probably the, uh, the most surprising and interesting finding from, from our research was um, the number of people who we tested apps with who said, look, I really like this, this is so easy, maybe I should change bank. Um, and that was, that was quite a surprise to us, um, and interesting and possibly scary for if you're a bank. Um, so last year, um, mobile penetration in New Zealand reached 44%. It's probably over That's half. Smartphone. Smartphone, yep, yep. Uh, penetration uh, reached, it's probably half of the population now. And uh, one study by TNS suggested about a third of New Zealanders bank on the mobile. So that's well past the sort of the early adopter tipping point. Um, and I think you're going to find that users will push their bank to get to do what they want on the mobile app. So, so it's a really, it's a case for the banks of get your act together or you could be losing customers? Uh, I think so. Probably not in any rapid phase, but but if you if you get left well behind, then, then you might be in trouble. You've also noted that some of them fall into the trap of taking the inside out approach. What do you mean by this? Well, it's, it's, it's sort of a bit of a corporate syndrome in the sense that you have um, some smart marketers or tech guys or even executives uh, in the bank saying, I just want this, build it for me. And, um, and whereas the approach really should be, what do customers want? Uh, and let's build that. So um, that's always a risk. And even if you do start with an internal idea, you should always, always test with the clients first um, to see if that's what they want. Now, um, globally, internationally, who are the leaders in smartphone banking, I guess, in terms of banks, but also countries? Yeah, so it's, um, it, the, the growth is really coming out of China uh, and India, partly just due to population volume. But if you look at, there is, there is over um, a billion smartphones in China now, 400 million people use their um, a smartphone to access the internet. That's just massive. And those banks like Bank of China um, actually rate really, really highly in terms of what you can and can't do, um, which is, might be surprising. And then, of course, you have the big US banks like um, JP Morgan Chase, who are, um, who are certainly treat this as a really serious channel. And, and what are the sort of, I guess, the key ingredients for success and, and, and the, the trends that you anticipate seeing in the next few years? Um, the, the ingredients for success, um, we think, are quite simple. So um, you really need to have a good understanding or empathy with your user, understand what your customers want um, when they use, um, when they deal with you full stop, but specifically when they use your mobile apps. Um, you also need to design for context. So um, the guys who use mobile apps, and you might be the same, you know, I might be doing the banking as I'm standing waiting on the bus. Um, or sitting on the bus. Um, so you, you need to have take a, dis, a different design approach. And the third thing is you always, always have to test it with your users thoroughly to make sure that they can use it the way you intended to do. So that's probably the, the secret to success. Great. Well, thanks for that, Chris. That's Chris Nigrin from Optimal Usability, and I'm Gareth Vaughan at interest.co.nz.